Welcome to Draw This. Draw This is a series of videos where I'll randomly generate a word and then draw it for you in real time while describing my process so that you, the viewer, can follow along. So let's go ahead and generate a random word here. The random word that I get is ice. So I'm going to go ahead and paint some icicles on a simple background. I have a canvas here in Corel Painter 2015, which is 11 by 14 inches at 150 dpi. You can use any size canvas you want. So ice is a little tricky because it's water that's frozen and it really just reflects what's around it rather than having its own particular color. So we're gonna to need to paint a background first and we'll just do a simple background, nothing too detailed because it's just gonna be kind of blurry and out of focus. So what we'll do is we will create a new layer, we'll call it sky and we will use the fill command to go ahead and fill it with a sky color. I think we're gonna use something kind of like this kind of a blue gray to start out with and then we will use the digital airbrush with a darker color shifted more towards indigo to put in some dark areas here on the top and on the bottom we will sample this base color that we started with by holding alt on the keyboard and we will make it a little bit lighter and shift it towards cyan just fill in the center here Maybe we'll take almost white. We'll put a real bright spot over here on the right of the canvas. Something like that looks pretty good. And now we'll add a little more definition by adding some trees. We'll create a new layer. We'll call it trees. We will use the chalk brush for this and these settings that I have here for my paper. And you'll want to sample the lowest, darkest area here on your canvas to get this dark blue or dark blue-gray and use a medium-sized brush and just put in some things that look like distant trees. They don't have to be specific at all. Something like that. And then we will go ahead and merge these two layers by holding shift to select both of them. We'll choose collapse layers. We'll call it background as the new name. And then we'll set the trees into the distance by blending them a little bit with the diffuse blur blender. You can use kind of light pressure. You don't want to press too hard because you'll over blend them. But I'm just using kind of scrubby circular strokes, something like that, where you can still see a little bit of definition in the leaves, but not too much and not too little. So now it looks a little more distant. And then let's add a little more darkness to the bottom using the digital airbrush and a darker blue. Let's go right, around, right along the bottom like that. I think that looks better. So now what we want to do is we want to go ahead and save this. We'll go to save as. And you want to make sure you save as a RIF. I know we normally save as a PSD, but this time we're going to save as a RIF. I'm going to save it as ice source. And then what we're going to want to do is we're going to want to save it again. We'll call it ice one this will be our actual artwork we're going to use the source to help us but this will be where we're going to paint so i'm going to save it and now what we want to do is we want to go to file and open the source it's there under recent and we want to go to canvas rotate canvas flip vertical we want to save this. So now our source is flipped upside down, which is good because reflections are often flipped like that. And we can go ahead and close this. So back here in our ice one composition, we'll open the clone source panel, which is hiding in the window menu. And we'll load the clone source by clicking on this icon on the bottom left. We'll go to open source. We'll select ice source and open that. And now it's loaded. And then now to add our icicle effect, we will go to Layers, Dynamic Plugins, and Liquid Metal. And you'll see if you've been using Painter X3 or an earlier version of Painter, this dialog has been updated in Painter 2015 and now it's much easier to use. So what you want to do is you want to change the rendering to Clone Source. And then you don't really need to mess with any of these settings unless you want to. But what you want to do, make sure the brush is selected so that you're painting and just paint. Now you want to follow the, the shape of an icicle. So 
the ice is kind of dripping and naturally it makes this form so it drips little by little down and down and down and tapers off so you want it to taper off and come to a point but you do want it to vary a little bit so you can make it a little wobbly and not perfect and you can just build up over it the more you paint the more ice you're going to add the thicker your icicle is going to get so we want something that looks kind of like this and you can again you can change them up so let's do another one they can be different lengths you don't all have to have them the same length or the same thickness there's one there maybe let's do a really really long one just kind of draw one line and then paint over it because that makes it easier to follow to make sure that it's straight because typically unless there's a lot of wind or something icicles go straight down you wouldn't want any icicles that are going to the side this is a pretty effective way to paint ice I have to say now we're not just gonna leave it like this because I know this looks a little looks a little phony we'll add to it so that these icicles look more like they would in a photograph So I'm just going to jump ahead a little bit here and fill in more of these and then we'll continue on after that. Okay, so I'm done putting in my icicles and we can go ahead and go to OK. And now they're there. Now, if you want, you can go back in and edit this if you'd like to and keep adding to it. If not, and you're done with it, you can go ahead and just right click on the layer and convert it to a default layer. And that'll just make sure that it just turns into a regular layer as you can see here. So we'll call this ice. Now, as I mentioned, we're not done with this ice. We need to do a little bit more to make it stand out and look more realistic. So first thing we need to do is create a layer underneath the ice. We'll call it tint. We'll make it a multiply composite method. And we will sample this background color here, one of these dark blues. We'll go ahead and just fill using the paint bucket. And then we'll reduce the opacity. Now, the purpose of this is to make the background darker so that the light ice stands out because the ice is the same color as the background. We want the ice to be a little bit lighter. So something like that looks good. And then we will create another layer. Let's call this glow. We'll take almost white and the digital airbrush. Let's just further enhance this glowing area here like so. The next thing we'll do is we'll add some dark outline to the edges of each icicle to make it look like they're kind of reflecting something that's off to the side. So we'll go to the ice layer, we'll right click on it, and choose select layer content. That puts a selection around the icicles. And if we create a new layer, that selection goes with us to the new layer and ensures that we don't paint outside of it. So let's call this outlines. And we can hide the selection while keeping it active by doing Control shift h on the keyboard. We'll change the composite method to multiply, and we will use the jitter scratch board brush. We'll sample one of these dark colors here from our background trees. Let's give it a try and see what happens. Now if we paint right along the edge, the paint will stay right inside the icicle. You don't have to do a perfectly wide line throughout the whole thing. You just want something that varies a little bit. This is going to be a reflection in the ice. Okay, so once we have the lines blocked in, we're going to want to distort them a little bit. Basically what we want to do is we just want to push some of the edges in a little bit. So it kind of it makes it look like the edge is a little more warped, like glass or water, ice, something like that. And it helps to fix it anywhere you think you might have overdone the line there. So when you have something like this, then you're looking pretty good. Let's go through and blend that a little bit using the Diffuse Blur Blender. Now don't do it everywhere, just in a couple places. Blend a few of these spots. Just kind of randomly. So that you have a few areas that are a little bit softer. Now we want to turn on Preserve Transparency. And we'll use the airbrush. Let's sample one of these lighter background colors and we can paint over the lower area of these shadows a little bit just to kind of lighten them if we need to to make it again look more realistic. 
Something like that looks pretty good, I think. Now let's turn off preserve transparency and add a layer for highlights. And these can be white. And we will use the Jitter Scratch Board tool again. What you want to do is you just kind of want to just tap, and draw little short strokes here and there. These will be the places that kind of bulge out the most on the icicle and then make them thinner and thinner as you get towards the tip. So it looks like ice. You'll have to use your own judgment here based on the kind of icicle that you got, but you want to try to stick to the lighter areas and you wouldn't want to put highlights really on top of your shadows or the dark reflections that you added. So try to enhance what you have, not destroy it. And we can blend those highlights just a little bit using the Diffuse Blur Blender, just like we did with the outlines that we put on them. That way all the edges aren't absolutely perfect on each of these. Some of them look a little bit more blended in than others. Something like that looks good. And then now let's add a little more definition to these icicles. We'll create a new layer and we'll call this Glow 2. This will be a screen composite method. We can use this kind of lighter blue color here. We'll select the glow brush. And mainly on these lighter areas where there's the most reflections, we'll want to glow those a little bit. That really helps the ice look more reflective. So now we want to deselect this active selection that we have. We can do Control D on our keyboard, and now we can paint outside of our icicles a little bit. We want to add a little bit of glow that does kind of spill off of the icicles mainly in the area that's closest to this light source over here. And we can even go ahead and bring it in front of the ice just a little bit here. Now it really looks like it's glowing. Let's return to the outlines layer and let's sample one of these dark colors from our trees. And we will use the airbrush to add in a little more detail. You can add some little cracks and creases in these icicles to make them stick out a little bit more. It's these little details that really help the piece look a little more finished. And then along some of these edges, we can go ahead and paint away a little bit of that outline. And again, this will just help it look more like a reflection. Doing it mainly in the areas where it bulges out a little bit. And let's return to the highlights layer and let's add just a few more little highlights here and there just to make this piece come together a little bit more. Now let's go ahead and save a copy of our artwork. We'll save it as Ice 2. And then let's go ahead and just drop all of our layers because we don't really need the layers anymore. And we can blend a little bit using the Blur Blender and just blur along the edges of each of these. That'll just help the edge not look so sharp. Okay, that's looking better. Now let's go ahead and add a new layer for a vignette. And that will, of course, be a multiply composite method. We'll just use a nice dark blue. And we'll use the digital airbrush to go ahead and vignette the top and the sides. Help this look more like a photograph. And it also just improves the contrast and makes it more artsy, I think. And then what we will do is we'll go ahead and adjust this vignette a little bit and we'll drop all. And then now we are going to do control A to make a selection around our canvas. We're going to do control C to copy and control V to paste. Now we have this duplicate here. And with that duplicate, we're going to go to effects, tonal control, equalize. Now equalize will balance out the light and dark and let you adjust each of those. So let's click auto set. It's going to kind of balance our color. Don't, if you get this weird effect here, don't worry about it because it's not permanent. We can get rid of it pretty easily. So if you adjust this white slider here, it'll make it brighter and the other one will make it darker. So we want to make this bright but not too bright. We just want to make it look like the light's really coming through this ice here. So I'm going to go to OK. And then to make this weird edge go away, just turn the layer on and off and you'll fix that. Let's go ahead and just drop all of these layers now. And then now if we want to play around with this a little bit more, we can use the bulge or the pinch brush 
to go ahead and bulge this if you want to make it look a little more lumpy. This is completely optional if you're happy with your icicles the way they are. You don't need to do this. This lets you just kind of warp it a little bit more. And you can use the pinch. If you find your tips aren't sharp enough, you can pinch them down like so. And then now let's add a little focus effect to this. So what we will do is we will do Control A to select all, Control C to copy, Control V to paste. That duplicates our canvas onto a new layer. And with that duplicate, we'll go to Effects, Focus, Soften. And we can see this nice preview now in Painter 2015. That's a very wonderful thing. You want it to be on Gaussian and turn the amount down to something like this. We'll go to OK. And then we will add a mask to that layer. Click inside the mask to make sure it's selected. We'll choose black with the digital airbrush. And with a pretty big airbrush, just paint right in the center here. That'll bring the focus back into the center. And now these icicles along the edges are kind of more blurry, and it's blurrier near the top here. That makes it look more like a photograph. Let's go ahead and drop all of our layers again. And let's add one more layer of highlights. Just to add a few more highlights, we'll make it a screen composite method. We'll use the glow brush, and we'll use this almost white color. It's going down here towards the tips of these icicles. And we just want to add a little more definition down here, because as the water's dripping, it's going to kind of collect near the end. So we want them to look a little more wet. And to do that, we just add a little more light highlight down here. And we'll zoom out to see how we're looking. I think we have a finished piece. So if you enjoyed this episode of Draw This, I hope you'll join me every Tuesday for a new episode. Click the like button and share this with your friends. And you can also click the subscribe button to help me grow this channel. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you next Tuesday.